In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Fantasy Grounds Classic Classic 5th Edition rule set. And we're going to be going over how you can add your own custom feats uh, to the game. So when you are adding feats to the game, um, if you have a, you know, a source book or something else or your own custom homebrewed feats that you want to add, there are a couple of uh, things that it's important to keep in mind. So when we're starting here with feats, we're going to go ahead and open up our feat record window. Now I have some pre-made ones here just for demonstration. I'll show these in, a, in just a moment. But uh, there are a number of things to, to keep in mind. When we create a feat, it looks very simple. There's a place for a name, a uh, name of the feat, and a, dis a box for the description. Now this is very simple. Um, as it is on the surface, this, this looks like there's uh, very little else that you're going to be able to do with this. However, Fantasy Grounds will attempt to parse through this and it will be looking for certain predefined uh, text patterns. And if it finds those predefined text patterns, then it will go ahead and attempt to automate the, uh, the behavior of that feat based on what it finds. And the, the patterns are developed, um, they're pulled from all of the various official Wizards of the Coast sources uh, for feat descriptions. And so it, it's not terribly flexible. So if you have a feat that isn't automating properly, it's important to, to double check and be very clear on the, uh, the patterns that Fantasy Grounds understands. Um, anything that is outside of those patterns will not be automated and all you will have is a description of the uh, the feat. Now many feats there is just simply is no way to automate the uh, the entries and it'll just end up being a description anyway and the players will be required to to adjust their role playing and and implement the feat perhaps in powers or other uh, other ways. But uh, let's take a look at the strings and the types of things that you can do with a feat um, that do allow some automation. So I have a screen here and I've gone through and collected all of the relevant uh, parts. So one of the first things that we can do with a feat is cause an increase in a stat. Uh, so the, you know, an increase of uh, any one of your ability scores or in, in some cases, um, yeah, it's usually just one, yeah. So you can select one. Uh, there is a phrase here that can be used to increase a single ability score. And uh, that is increase your constitution score. Now constitution here will be, of course, whatever stat that you're doing, strength, dexterity, wisdom, intelligence, charisma, whatever, uh, by a number to a maximum of 20. 20 is kind of the default maximum listed in all of the feats. Uh, and this number, you can kind of pick whatever number you want here. The default is always going to be 2 in, uh, in most of the feats um, that allow a single score increase, or 1. So that's the, the way that you would add a single ability score. Now the way this works is I actually have this implemented, this exact phrase. Um, now you notice, if you notice a moment ago, I had an extra space between the 2 and the comma. This will break the automation. It is, it's that uh, finicky. You do have to have it exactly matching without any extra spaces or extra commas or any extra stuff in there. So if we take a clean NPC, this is straight tens, there's no class level background, anything else added to this NPC. And I go ahead and I add this feat, which just has the description, increase your constitution score. Drag and drop it. And you can see here it's added the feet. You can see on the chat as well as add the feet. And now if we go back to the main tab, his constitution score has increased by two. Uh, so that's done exactly what we wanted it to. Now, some of the other strings that you have available to you, this, uh, this series is uh, for a choice of ability. Now, I will do want to point out that even though you can type in another number here instead of one. Right now, Fantasy Grounds defaults that value to one and 
no any number you put here is going to be ignored. So one is the only possible value for these four uh, strings. But with one of those, you can either have uh, you know a choice of two, a choice of three, a choice of four, or this last one gives increase the chosen ability score is to be pick any one of the available six. Um, and the same thing, if I open this up, you can see it's just got the basic text, increase the chosen ability score by one to a maximum of 20. When I add it to our character again, our empty character, it will give me that feat, and then it'll allow me to select a score. I'll pick Charisma in this case. I come back to the main tab and I see Charisma has been increased. So that's our stat or ability score increase capabilities. Um, and these are the strings that uh, it understands. Now, these are available in a post on the Fantasy Grounds forum. Um, I've documented all of the strings that uh, Fantasy Grounds understands. The next uh, type of thing that you can do with a feat is granting proficiencies. Uh, so granting armor proficiencies, weapon proficiencies, skill proficiencies, and tool proficiencies. And then these are the strings that you will use. So for example, something to gain proficiency with something armor, for example, heavy armor or light armor, um, gain proficiency with uh, uh, well, including shields in this case. Now, when you add that to a character, just like before, you can see it has no proficiencies. If I drag and drop this armor proficiency, it will add that down, down to the proficiencies line. And that looks just like that. Uh, you gain proficiency with heavy armor and shields. Same thing with a weapon proficiency, similar type of thing. You gain proficiency with two weapons of your choice. I go ahead and drag and drop it. You'll see now it's added this line of weapon choice to me. So again, armor proficiency, those are the two possible sentences or uh, phrases that you can use. Weapon proficiency, there's only a couple of options that you have. Same thing with skill proficiencies. Um, one skill proficiency of your choice, gain proficiency in the what A or B skill uh, where you spell out the name of the skill or you gain proficiency in any combination of, uh, in this case, www, you would type out the number like two. Make sure there's properly spaces, skills or tools. Um, and then you would, you would go ahead and paste that into the feet text and then add it to your character. And it will go ahead and automate and giving you those proficiencies. Next up, we can add some languages. So you can learn, and again, www in this case uh, means to spell out the number. Learn one language of your choice. Now, in this case, it's important to remove that S. Uh, if you are doing more than one language, you can type in like three languages of your choice. And uh, we'll go ahead and create that. So five languages we'll see you get three languages of your choice and then we're going to add this to our character here once we do that you can see now it appears here down in the languages section that you have that choice we can also grant initiatives to or bonus to initiative um, that's another thing that we can automate a, uh, a positive or negative value uh, can be added uh, you can pick any number that you want you can add a bonus to your passive perception. Now this will be noted on the front page of the character sheet. There's a field on the main tab uh, for your perception up here, your passive perception. And so that'll, that number will get added or subtracted there as necessary. Uh, you can process speed increases. Uh, your speed increases by so many feet or you increase your walking speed by so many feet. And that will modify whatever value is listed in your your uh, your movement speed. So if you have a, a standard move of 30 feet or, or whatever, you can change it to 35, 40, or whatever. Uh, and then lastly, when it comes to feats, in Fantasy Grounds, there are three feats uh, which are uh, hard-coded in to Fantasy Grounds, into the rule set. And uh, so in these cases, 
it, for the most part, it does not even require any descriptive text. So let me show you an example here of the tough feet. Now, in fifth edition, the tough feet uh, adds some additional hit points to a character. So let's grab uh, Shaira and uh, take a look at her. So she has 14 hit points. We're going to create a feat and just name it tough. It will have no descriptive text at all. Uh, we're just going to call it tough feat. And if I add it to the Shaira, who had 14 hit points, and I come back to her main, now she has 20 hit points. So you can see here, Fantasy Grounds will only look at that name of that feat and say, hey, I already know what to do with that. Um, so that is hard-coded in. The other two that are hard-coded in are the Medium Armor Master and Dragon Hide. Now, Medium Armor Master, what it does is it changes the way your armor class is calculated. Um, and you can find details about that looking at the, uh, the feat description in the Player's Handbook. Uh, Dragon Hide, it will look for the, at the name Dragon Hide, and if it is, then it will scan the text of that feat um, looking for a, a string so that it knows what how to calculate your armor class. So it looks for your AC is, and then a number. So something like your AC is 13. Uh, and then if you happen to have the natural armor trait, it will go ahead and take the higher of those two calculations. Uh, so that's how Dragon Hide works. So those three feats, Tough, Medium, Armor, Master, and Dragon Hide are pre-hard-coded into the rule set. Um, in, in general, you just need the, the feat to have that a proper name. For everything else, you do need to pay attention to the wording that's used if it's going to be any of these kinds of uh, modifications. Uh, if it is, try to uh, copy the wording as close as possible so that Fantasy Grounds can pick it up and parse it and understand it and automate it. Um, anything that is outside, as I said before, anything outside of these specific phrases uh, will not be automatically parsed by Fantasy Grounds, and you'll just have to uh, handle it manually. All right, thank you.